Hey, welcome to Rise Church. Thanks so much for joining us online today. We believe that Jesus wants to do so much for you and through you, and we'd love to hear how he's working in your life. Please take a second to email your story to stories at rise-church.com. We hope you leave today feeling encouraged and uplifted. Enjoy the message. What's up, Rise Church? Come on, it is so good to be together with you guys. I know we're not in person, but we look forward to being back with you next Sunday. And praise God for technology. My name is Adam. This is my wife, Rebecca. Together, we get to lead this amazing church. And if you're a first-time guest with us in the house today, or maybe you're watching online, we are thrilled that you are here. Thank you so much for being our guest. Hey, maybe you're back for the second time. Maybe your first week was last week at Easter. Man, thanks for being back again with us today. And come on, can we just put our hands together and celebrate all that God did at Easter at Rise Church? Come on, Jesus. Thank you for saving and changing lives forever, forever. Well, hey, God has put a message on our heart today that we're so happy to share with you. Uh, But before we jump in, we have one quick announcement that we wanna give you today. Yeah, we have baptisms coming up in just a few short weeks, and this is such an incredible Sunday where we get to come alongside and celebrate what God has been doing in your heart. And so if you want to be signed up for baptisms, here's all we need from you. If you could make plans to attend one of our really quick baptism classes, Uh, They're gonna be after every single worship experience this Sunday and next Sunday, so choose which time works best for you. Even if you're just interested and you're not sure, stop by one of those classes. They'll just be able to walk you through what that Sunday's gonna look like, what it means to be baptized, answer any questions that you have. But this is an incredible Sunday where we get to celebrate those of you that want to take this next step in your walk with Jesus. It's one of our favorite Sundays here at Rise Church. Yes, we cannot wait, so sign up today. Let's go. Well, come on, today we are kicking off a brand new teaching series. I lied to you last week. I told you it was gonna be a three-week series, but as I was preparing this week, I felt like God put it on my heart, gave me even more stuff to share with you, so we are making it a four-week series. So come on, for the next four weeks, all we're gonna talk about is heaven. I heard a story about a Sunday school teacher that was teaching third graders, and she was teaching them about heaven, and she was telling them, what do I have to do to get to heaven? She said, can I sell everything that I own and give it to the church? Will that get me to heaven? And all the third graders shouted back, no. And she said, well, if I'm kind to people and I help other people, will that that get me to heaven? And everybody said, no. And she said, what about if I'm nice to animals? Will that get me to heaven? Everybody said, no. She said, well, what do I have to do to get to heaven? A little boy from the back shouted out, you have to be dead. That was kind of funny. I don't know. I don't know. Come on. Today, we want to clarify what heaven is, what heaven isn't. Over the next four weeks, we just want to share with you um, really how we can get our eyes and our mind and even our lives focused on eternity. This morning, Rebecca and I want to give you three truths about heaven. Come on. If you're taking notes, write these down. The first one is this. Heaven is real. Come on. Heaven is real. It is a real physical place where we get to be with God forever. Heaven doesn't have to, in our minds, I remember as a child thinking that it was this far off, magical place that maybe one day I would get to go to. No, it is a real place, and God is preparing a place for us in heaven with him. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Come on, we cannot even imagine what God has in store for us. If you continue to read through the scriptures, and we're gonna talk about this in the weeks to come, God gives us a glimpse of what eternity is going to look like. He gives us a glimpse of what heaven looks like and what it appears like, but we cannot even grasp that with our physical minds, just how incredible it's going to be when we get to get to heaven. In uh, John chapter 14, it says that God is preparing this place for us. He says, my father's house, it has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And he goes on to say, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. He is saying, this is a physical place. I am going there. I am getting it ready for you. And man, you better get ready because I am going to come back and take you to be with me. 
I love to host. Um, I know my husband joked last week that I like to stay home in my pajamas all day, and that is true. But I also do love to host a good party, whether it's a birthday party for someone that I love, for my kids. I love to host and entertain here at Rise Church. If you were here last Sunday for Easter, you saw that we love to host you on, on weekends like Easter, where we get to put out some extra decorations and make the place just feel pretty. Preparing for that week is so fun to me to get the fresh flowers and the yummy drinks and to do all of this to prepare a place for those that we love and that we value so that they feel welcomed in our house. This is what Jesus is doing Amen. for us. Amen. He is preparing a place for us. Why? Because he loves us, because he values us, because he wants to be with us. And he is doing this for us right now, preparing this place for us. And that is a hope that we get to cling to. It takes faith to believe in something that you can't see. So our faith has to be in this, that if Jesus said he was building and preparing a place for us, then we have to take him at his word. And I don't know about you, but I'm just crazy enough to say, Jesus, if you said it, I'm going to believe you. A few years back, there was a book that came out that they eventually turned to a, into a movie called Heaven is for Real. If you read the book or you saw the movie, you know it's this story of this four-year-old boy who, who dies, basically, and, and he has an experience. He, he, he sees heaven, and supernaturally, he comes back to life, and he starts telling his parents things that he saw, and his parents are like, there's no way you could have known these things, things about past family members and, and other things that had gone on, and, and, and they come back, and, and, and their only example is, or their only response is, man, heaven must be for real, like this boy has seen something. The Apostle Paul has this same experience. In 2 Corinthians 12, he actually says it like this. I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Now, the first heaven uh, we know is, is the earth. The second heaven is, is the universe and the and, and solar system, galaxies, everything like that. The third heaven is, 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 is heaven. And Paul says, 14 years ago, I actually went up there. And whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows. Now, it's gonna sound like Paul's tripping a little bit. It's gonna sound like he's on something, but, but continue reading with me. He says, yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside of my body, but I do know that I was caught up to paradise and I heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words, things no human is allowed to tell. Paul's experience was that he literally was getting stoned. Like people were trying to kill him for preaching the gospel. And, and literally, I, I think Paul dies. And, and I don't know exactly what happened. And Paul's even saying here, I don't know what happened either. All I know is I, I went to heaven. And now the Bible doesn't record this, but I like to try to picture what Paul experienced and, and what happened when he went to heaven because he said, I saw things so astounding, I can't even talk about them. In my mind, I like to think that Paul maybe had a conversation with Jesus, that he saw Jesus and Jesus told him, Paul, I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is this is heaven and you get to come back here one day. And Paul's like, come back here one day. And Jesus said, yeah, that's the bad news. Um, there's some people on earth right now that are praying for you to come back to life. And I imagine in my mind that Paul's like, don't listen to them, they're a bunch of sinners, God. Like, come on, I wanna stay here. And, and, and Jesus says back to him, Paul, um, I'm not done working in you and through you. There are still more people who do not know about me and I'm gonna use you to bring more people here. And then Paul goes on to say this in Philippians chapter 1, verses 23 and 24. I'm torn between two desires. Paul's saying, I, I got two things that I, I would love to do right now. Here's what they are. The first one is, I long to go be with Christ, which would be far better for me. But for your sakes, here's the other desire. It is better that I continue to live. Why would Paul say that I long to be with Christ. Well, I think it was because 14 years ago, he saw heaven. I think it was because 14 years ago, he saw Jesus and he saw how amazing his heaven was and he knew it was real. And he said, that's where I really want to be. I think if we could get just a glimpse of heaven, then we would realize that nothing on this earth compares. And it would be a lot easier for us to be able to say our goodbyes here knowing that 
Heaven is waiting for us because heaven is real. Second thing we want to share with you, the second truth about heaven is this, that heaven is promised to God's children. So we already read in John 14 that, that Jesus promises heaven to us as his children. He says, I'm going to go prepare this place for you. And, and this is a free gift. This is part of our salvation, that we didn't do anything to earn this promise of heaven. He just gives it to us. There's nothing that we can do to gain it. There's nothing that we can do to lose our spot in eternity with him. It is a promise Amen. that he gives to us as his children. And he goes on in John 14. He's talking to the disciples and he's letting them know, hey, I'm here with you now. But um, in just a short while, I'm going to be arrested and I'm going to be crucified. and I'm going to die. But then don't worry, I'm going to be raised back to life but then I'm gonna leave you again and I'm gonna leave my Holy Spirit with you. And, and then he says, I'm going to come back for you though. I'm gonna be in heaven waiting for you, but I will come back for you. And Thomas is like, Lord, how in the world are we, do we know the way to get to heaven? And I feel Thomas, he's so confused here. He's like, how do we know the way? And if this were in today's terms and Thomas was asking the Lord for like, I need some directions. If this were me, I'd be like, Lord, don't tell me to go east or west or anything like that. Like, tell me to turn at the Chick-fil-A or tell me to turn to the Target. Like, give me some clear directions here. And the Lord is so patient with Thomas though. He replies and says, Thomas, you know the way. You know the way. I am Amen. the way, Amen. the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. Amen. Jesus is the only way for us to get to eternity. This is a promise that he gives to us when we become children of God. When we say yes to him, you are personally invited to be in eternity with Jesus. So heaven is the promise, and then Jesus is the path to get to the promise. That's right. He is the only thing that will get us to eternity. And this promise, though, he says it is available to anyone who wants it. In Revelation 3.20, it says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Jesus is saying this invitation to have a relationship with me it is available to anyone. Yes. Anyone who responds to the call of Jesus in their life, this promise of becoming a child of God and entering into eternity with Jesus, it is available to us all. And come on, when we're welcomed into the family of God, what an incredible promise that he says, you get to spend eternity with me. I'm gonna be waiting arms wide open for you. And here's what that means if you're already a follower of Jesus. If you would say, man, he has come into my life, then that promise is available to you. If you're not a follower of Jesus yet, that promise is still available to you. The invitation is there. All you have to do is say, yes, God, that is what I want for my life. I love how Peter says it in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy, come on, how many of you are grateful for the mercy of God? According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection, come on somebody, of Jesus Christ from the dead to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away. Here's what I love. I love this part right here. It is reserved in heaven for you. You ever been to a, a fancy restaurant? You ever been to like one of those like real nice restaurants and you dress up a little bit for it? You know what I'm talking about? And you walk in and the first thing that the host or the hostess say to you is this, do you have a reservation? And if you don't, you gotta go wait outside or in the line with all the other suckers. You know what I'm talking about? But if you have a reservation, you say, oh yes, we have a reservation Peterson, party of four at 6.30. Who are we kidding? We probably eat about five o'clock. We're, we're, we're old like that. And you have that reservation and, and you walk in like royalty, like what's up everybody? I got a reservation, yeah. When you have that reservation, it doesn't matter how crowded the restaurant is. There is a peace and a confidence and an assurance that there is a table that is waiting for you. If you have called upon Jesus to come into your life, to be your Lord, to be your Savior, if you have called upon him to forgive you of your sins, come on, you can have a peace, 
you can have a confidence and you can have an assurance that heaven is promised to you. Jesus himself has called ahead and he has made your reservation for you. Come on, can we praise him and thank our Savior for the promise of heaven. God, you are so good. Let me shift gears for just a little bit and talk to you who also this promise is for, is for God's children, all God's children, every single one of us. I love how it says it in Revelation 7, verse 9. After this, this is John, the revelator. He gets a peek into heaven. He sees it, and he writes it down as fast as he can. He gives us this glimpse. He says, after this, I looked And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. Come on, thank you, God, that heaven's going to be crowded from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Come on, in heaven, we are not going to all look the same. Somebody say, praise God. I don't want to look like you. I don't want you to look like me. We're all going to look different. There's not a white section. There's not a black section. There's not a Hispanic section. It's all God's people together as one. And if you got a problem with that, you can take it up with God, because heaven is his house, and all of his children are welcome there. And if you're saying, well, uh, if they're going to be there, I don't want to be there. Well, you're right. You probably aren't going to be there. You need to figure this out now. Come on. Thank you, God, that all of your children get to experience heaven together with you, because heaven is promised to God's children. The last truth we want to share with you this morning is this, that heaven is our hope. We can put our hope in a lot of different things while we're here on this earth, but to have that hope of eternity with Jesus is an incredible promise that we get to be with God in his presence for all of eternity. Amen. I know that life is hard. Like some of you have suffered while you're here on this earth. You have lost mothers and fathers and children. You have buried people that are so dear to your heart. To have that hope of heaven, that is what can be life-giving for us when we are walking through difficult moments. As a child, I can remember laying in bed and dreaming, like, what is heaven going to look like? Is it real? What is it really going to be like? Do I really get to go there? Is it gonna be as amazing as everyone has said? And I remember even the Lord just speaking to my heart as a child and letting me know this place is real. And it, even as a child, it becoming this hope for yeah, my heart. That's good. That as, as I lost someone that I loved, that I could have a hope that I would get to see that person again and that I would get to spend eternity with God. I wanna read this scripture to you that, Um, has been just so dear to my family. When we lost my mom when I was young, I was almost 10 years old, and and it was just, it was tragic, it was sudden, and I remember looking around and just seeing my family, everyone just grieving, like it was difficult, and I know some of you are like, I have been there. Some of you have walked through so many losses in your life that I just can't even imagine the depth of the grief that you have experienced, but in this scripture, it's such a reminder that this life right now, it is so temporary that it is not the end and that we get to grieve differently than those who do not know Jesus. We get to grieve with hope. And Paul's talking to the church here and he is giving them hope not to give up in this life because there is something else on the other side that is coming. So don't give up. Don't lose hope because here is some incredible news. He says, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. We don't want you to be uninformed about those who have already died and gone before you so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. He's saying we aren't going to grieve the same. Why? Because we have a hope. And he goes on to say that Jesus died and he rose again. And if we believe that, then we get to believe that he's going to come back for us. And he says, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so will we be with the Lord forever. Forever. And then he says, therefore, encourage and comfort one another. 
with these words. Man, this is hope for us as followers of Jesus that life is hard, but it's not the end. And we can walk through this season of suffering and of, and of grief with hope because we have hope that eternity is available to us. We like to say in our family after my mom passed away, my family would say, perhaps today, perhaps today will be the day that Jesus comes back to get us. Perhaps today will be that day that we get to see Jesus. So maybe you're walking through some suffering. You're walking through grief. You are missing someone in your life. Perhaps today, because this life is so short, right. and there will be a day when Jesus says, now is the time that you get to come and spend eternity with me, and that is hope for us. I look at my wife, and she's somebody that has experienced a lot of hurt a lot of pain and a lot of loss in this life. And I know that's some of your stories as well. And I'm not trying to pass over or say, trying to minimalize maybe anything that you're going through. I'll just say it like this. This is not our home. And this earth, if we walk through something difficult, this is the worst it's ever gonna get. I heard one pastor say it like this. This is the closest to hell that we'll ever get because heaven is promised to us. And I love how in Revelation, again, John the Revelator, he gets a peek into heaven and, and he gives us these words and I pray that these words bring you hope even if you're in the middle of some grief right now. He says, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is among men and he will dwell among them and they shall be his people and God himself will be among them. That tells me that God actually wants to be with us. That's so comforting. That, that gives me hope. And then he goes on to say this, and God himself, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. This is the hope of heaven. Our family loves to go on vacation. We look forward to it every summer like so many of you do. And Rebecca really loves to just get away and experience new things and new places. And we love to eat at restaurants that we don't have here in Jacksonville. And for us, it's fun to get away, but maybe you feel the same way. Like, yeah, vacation's great, but come on, Dorothy. There is no place like home. I love being in my house. I know Rebecca loves being in our house with her pajamas on, just hanging out, especially with our new our little puppy now. It's good to be home. There's no place like home. And I think that sometimes the heartache that we experience here on this earth is because this isn't our home. And we're longing for something more. We're longing for a place where there is no more pain. There is no more hurt. There is no more crying. Like, God, I'm just tired here on this earth. Yeah, it's because this place was never meant to be our final resting place. There is a home that God has created for us. We are just passing through. And as we pass through, we're gonna have really hard days and really hard years and hard seasons in this life. But this is not the end. Heaven is promised to God's children. It is real and it is our hope. And I pray that as you set your eyes and you set your heart and your mind on eternity, that that is what is able to propel you through this life here on this earth and that God meets you every step of the way, that he fills you with hope now for the hope that is to come. Thanks for watching today. If you'd like to continue the conversation, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Instagram. If our church has had an impact on you and you'd like to support all that Jesus is doing in this place, you can do so by going to rise church dot com slash give and select the giving option that best suits you. Thanks so much for joining us online and we hope you have a blessed week.